You were walking home when you bumped into this stranger. He smiled and apologized. You nodded and continued walking. But there's something about him that's a little off. The smile was just a little too wide. The walk was a little too stiff. And his voice was a bit too scattered. It's like 99% of him is human, but 1% is something else. This is called Uncanny Valley, and this is what horror makes of. Uncanny Valley originated from an essay written by a Japanese roboticist named Masahiro Mori. He created a graph plotting people's emotional responses to robots that progressively look and act like humans. The closer the robot gets to human appearance and behavior, the creepier it descends. It looks real, but not natural. It's exactly the imperfect human resemblance that provokes a feeling of uneasiness in observers. It's like there's an alarm bell hidden deep inside you that suddenly rings off, telling you something is not right. Look around and you'll see our horror media is seething with valleys of the uncanny, whether it's the twin girl standing menacingly in the hallway in The Shining, the possessed child spinning her head front to back while her parents watching helplessly, or the masked nurses lurching and lumbering in Silent Hill. For the most part, they look like humans, but something is off. Where does this unsettling creepiness come from? Is Uncanny Valley a vestige of our prehistoric primal fear? Is it an evolutionary survival mechanism? Turned out there are quite a few scientific theories aimed to dissect the fears behind Uncanny Valley. Some suggested that Uncanny Valley links to our built-in evolutionary adaptation. We're able to recognize weird faces or weird movements because they might be indicative of poor reproductive potential. We have these built-in cognitive filters to avoid choosing bad mates, which might affect our reproductive success. Because if there's one thing we learned from Charles Darwin's evolution theory is that for humans to evolve and dominate the Earth, we had to be very successful in the field of reproduction. That's one theory. Others suggested that our fear of uncanny valley helps us avoid pathogens, viruses, and diseases. Some said the valley provokes fear of death and our own mortality. It reminds us how human we are and how we will inevitably wither away into oblivion. There are many more similar theories, but they all have one important overarching implication. That is, Uncanny Valley makes us scared of things that are categorically contradictory, things that are conflicting with our adaptive behaviors. And from there, we see a deeper psychological horror. The horror of being seen as almost human. In Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the creature didn't ask to be born, but yet thrust into the world of social isolation and rejection. It belongs to the uncanny valley, neither dead nor alive, made of scavenged human and animal parts, and not considered human. It lamented, I, the miserable and the abandoned, am an abortion to be spurned at and kicked and trampled on. In H.P. Lovecraft's The Outsider, the narrator in this case is the monster himself, but the monster has no idea of what he looks like. He also belongs to the uncanny valley, he just didn't know it, described himself as the ghoulish shade of decay, antiquity, and desolation. His horror is that he'll forever be seen as subhuman, belonging to nowhere. Here, the monsters are intelligent beings like us, but they're seen as subhuman, as monsters, just because they fell into Uncanny Valley. Uncanny Valley is a cautionary tale against latent racism and ableism. It showed how we're prone to demonizing people that don't belong to our common categories, which can exacerbate discrimination against people who look and act differently, those with visible disabilities or people with psychological disorders. There is an acceptable range of differences allowed for a human being, and anyone who goes beyond that would fall into the Uncanny Valley, where they're seen as non-human and subhuman, they still get human treatment sometimes, but most of the time they'll probably get the same look Frankenstein's monster received. But remember, Uncanny Valley is a working theory after all. People are still trying to understand it. Uncanny Valley depends heavily on Maury's assumptions about what would constitute an average healthy person look like. That was 30 years ago. It's not a law. It can be bent. Humans can and should embrace the fact that many people on Earth live in situations where injury, illness, and disability are not sudden and unfamiliar or eerie, but rather are unfortunately everyday occurrences. Uncanny Valley might be what horrors make of, but only when we allow it to be so.